Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 111 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. So Happy New Year, uh, we are still planking of course and it's going very well. Um, now in the last episode uh, we really got to know the volunteer crew a little bit better um, and in this episode we're going to get to know Pete a bit better. Now, Pete Stein is an independent shipwright. Uh, he's been working with me here on this project for quite a few months now. Um, and as many of you have noticed, he's an extremely hard worker, very talented, um, and quite a character. And in fact, my uh, Hey Pete, what are you doing line has um, become probably the most popular line on this channel, certainly recently. And uh, people are always interested to hear his uh, grudging explanations of what he's doing. So. He's got a pretty wild backstory actually, and he's a very interesting guy. Um, and so I figured it was about time we got to know him a bit better. So this episode is going to be mostly telling his story, um, a little bit of it anyway, and a little bit of boat building here as well. So I've just pulled over for a second, but I'm on my way to Port Townsend, and uh, the rest of the crew are already there because today we're going sailing. Now we've had a bit of time off over Christmas, a bit of time off over New Year's uh, and it's been really nice to have a bit of a break. It's allowed us to do a few more fun things like this. Um, so today uh, Pete's taking us out on his boat. He's got a little gaff sloop that he keeps in Port Townsend. So we're going to take it out and um, sail a bit around the bay down there. Now most of you guys probably know I've done a bit of sailing but um, I am very much going to be staying out of the way today. Uh, it's not my boat and uh, I don't want to uh, step on any toes. So I'm just going to be documenting the uh, process today. I just realized what I said about toes. But <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to be documenting the process today. And uh, in this video in general, um, I'm going to be staying behind the camera, behind the scenes a bit and um, really just focusing on the other guys. rough around the edges, you know, but so am I. We'd rather not have to do a man overboard drill. Um, <laughs> we'll store the life vest up forward under the foredeck or back in the stern there. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. It's not, a, it's not a drill if there's someone in the water, right? <laughs> no, that's, yeah, it's not a drill. Okay, that's, cool. um, that's an emergency. <laughs> Rosie and Rowan. You can be in the boat. You're going to be the holder honors. <laughs> Matt, are you excited? Yes, I'm very excited. Hopefully I don't go swimming. <laughs> yeah. I think there's much chance of that. <laughs> yeah. Not a great deal of wind. <laughs> yeah, true. <thrill. laughs> you never know. Man, I sure hope someone knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> um, this is the third time I've taken this boat out, actually. So. Huh. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> it's so confident. I love the second thoughts. Of, there's still a little bit of, uh, oh, that, oh, this is what this line does. I remember. Fender at the bow of this boat, right where Rosie is now. Hey, stop rowing for a sec. I can't. <laughs> Just wait till we have to come back in, no back and the current and wind are against us. I feel a little bad. 
Bye. Do you guys helping clean up? <laughs> Is that what's happening? Yeah, yeah. We don't want to. Hey, David, trucks. you missed a spot over there. <laughs> what? You missed a spot. I don't got no strap. <laughs> well, thanks, Pete. Okay. Yeah, no problem. We'll that was do it fun. Again when it's warmer too. Yeah. And windier. Wind, we could go windier. <laughs> Your boat's awesome. She she went really well. Yeah, it moves pretty well. Even in even when you're in light light breeze out there, you still. With some headway, which is well, good. With such experienced crew, how can you not? It's the crew that? really that makes the ship. <laughs> we all know this. <laughs> uh, a little bit about my boat. My boat's name is Truant, um, which is the also the design name. There's five or six of them built. Um, mine's the the first one built at the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building, um, which is now in Port Hadlock, Washington. Um, it's a 26 foot overall uh, fantail gaff um, gaff rig sailboat. It was built in 1994, um, by, designed by a local guy here in Port Townsend named Ed Lachard. It's a, a little adventure boat, um, mostly a day sailor, but you can take it out for a weekend, go camping. So right now I'm in Port Townsend Boat Haven, which is a fairly large and very much a working boatyard. And Pete's workshop is here, so we're going to be checking with him, having a look at his workshop. Uh, and we're also going to be checking in with the Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op, uh, who are of course doing the Western Flyer restoration and having a look at how they're getting along with that. Okay, here we are, uh, Pete Stein, intro number two. Been on the project for a while, but uh, here we are in my natural setting. This is my shop in uh, the Port Townsend Boatyard uh, over in Port Townsend, Washington. I've had this building for a little over a year, October 2019. Uh, I, I was working at the Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op where they're doing the Western Flyer uh, restoration. I ended up uh, leaving that gig to start my own business pretty much um, and I'm in the I'm in the Port Townsend Shipwrights co-op original building so from um, from 1984 1985 um, a handful of the shipwrights um, who started the co-op built this timber frame building uh, two and a half stories um, and they built it around the ship saw I've been down in the yard here for about a decade um, I'm a winter 2010 um, I moved down here um, and kind of fell in with some older shipwrights who taught me a thing or two about boats. Um, got into fishing a little bit up in Alaska, did four seasons up there, two on my own boat and two as a deckhand. Helped run a shop, Cunningham Ships Carpentry, uh, with Bob Cunningham, who's from Massachusetts. We moved out here around the same time, but he had about 55 years more experience on boats than me. Um, so he taught me a lot um, and we ran shop together until he passed away uh, about two and a half years ago. So I've only done a couple jobs out of my own shop here until I started working over in Squim with Leo. Um, so I come down here nights and weekends and uh, work on my own hobby projects. I've got a couple shop mates. Um, I got Eric Falshram, Compass Woodwork. Um, he does a lot of uh, interior stuff. Uh, and then uh, we have a seamstress on the, th on the third floor loft, uh, Maya of Golden Hour Upholstery. So she does upholstery and uh, sewing work. Sail plans and some arrangements for my truant. So this is the drawings from Ed, Lich Ed Lichard. Um, so we were just out sailing in, in the bay here on, on this little thing. The battleship. It's a classic piece of machinery. It's the big 24 inch planer, an old crescent, um, three phase, heavy duty. Um, 
take a quarter inch pass if you want to. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, really good for hogging off rough material. What Luckily, are you been planting in that? Something pretty colorful. There's actually yeah, some paduk. So I'm Tim Lee with the Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op and we're working on the Western Flyer. We're just about complete with the hull. We just finished uh, the caulking and are starting to look at the interior stuff and um, working on the house again, trying to get the house moved. What are you doing there? So we've got a bedding compound or seam compound that's getting uh, shot in with a pneumatic caulk gun into the seams of the uh, boat to uh, keep the water out when it swells and uh, compresses. And uh, basically we're using this press right here to make these tubes. Um, rolling it up with some foil, heating them up, and then loading them into the uh, cock gun and shooting them in. Perfect. How many miles of seam have you got to do? <laughs> A whole lot. <laughs> yeah. <That's> job security. <laughs> that on film. Would you, do you think you'd notice if, uh, if if someone snuck in at night and and borrowed your uh, your seam compound squeezer? Not if they left a couple of bottles of whiskey. Uh -huh. Interesting, very interesting. Well, yeah, thanks a lot for the for the update. Yeah. Pete, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, coffee. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Yeah. You live on a boat or something? <laughs> uh, no, I live on a, on a plot of land I bought with a few friends. We got 20 acres, um, 20 pretty thickly wooded acres. Um, so I built a little cabin on it when, I, when we were renting it. Prior to ship riding or prior to moving out to Washington here, um, I traveled a lot from age 17 to 22, I kind of uh, wandered around the country uh, hitchhiking and riding freight trains. I wasn't running from anything. I was just kind of seeing the country. Um, you know, it wasn't, I had a nice, I had a nice life growing up with my folks and stuff. There wasn't uh, anything I was trying to get away from, but uh, it was a free and fun way to see the United States. Back in the 30s, there was a lot of folks who, uh, when they 
when the depression happened and, and they were migrant workers or lo traveling the country looking for work and they didn't have any money, they'd, they'd ride freight trains. So we have that culture here um, and there's folks that still do it. I, I'm, there's a surprisingly large amount of people I think still doing it, yeah, yeah. Um, I have friends that still do it. Mm -hmm. um, there's even some YouTube channels of guys doing it, um, of course. So I did that on and off for about five years. Um, going to and from St. Louis was my home base at the time. Medically certified. He's the doctor. <laughs> That's a lot better. Thanks, Matt. Stay off that for a couple hours. Uh, anyways, I'm making 200 of these. Uh, why? Why? Uh, just for fun. <laughs> no, uh, I'm making 200 longer rivets so that we can rivet through the floors in the boat. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, I haven't actually pulled that prank in some time. Uh, the last time I did it, I almost gave a guy a heart attack. I can turn my feet around, obviously. Uh, I've done it on the dance floor. I've done turned both of them around on the dance floor. Some people have commented that I maybe walk or move a little funny sometimes. Um, and that is on account that uh, I have prosthetic legs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I rode freight trains for some time. <laughs> for some time. Um, and a little over nine years ago, I, uh, I had a little accident, a little goof up. <laughs> um, down in, I was in Portland, Oregon, and uh, uh, was getting on a train with Backtrack, actually. Um, he was just a puppy. I won't tell the whole story, but I got in the situation and uh, ended up falling and uh, was between train cars. The train was moving maybe four or five miles an hour and uh, fell between two train cars, uh, got knocked over, uh, got my, got hit right at the ankles by that first car. Had wheels on both sides, so I was actually in between the tracks um, underneath the train and uh, had to roll out uh, while the train was still moving. Anyway, so yeah, I was, I was amputated about nine years ago. I got both legs from, I still have my knees, so I'm super fortunate. I guess you could call me lucky. Um, <laughs> the luckiest guy who got ran over by a freight train. Um, uh, and firstly, I didn't die, so, um, which is pretty cool. I've got my, my knees and then some stumps, um, and uh, hence the tattoo, stumped. I probably stumped some of you. Um, so, so anyway. They, uh, they're stainless, titanium. <clears throat> I got, you can't see much of them. I do wear really tall boots. <clears throat> With shorter boots, a bunch of junk falls down there. <laughs> so every time I take my boots off, I'll pull out nails, sawdust, shavings. Um, I, last week I found a pencil in there. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Woo. So pretty much this is just a, a rubber foot shell that takes up room in your shoes. Inside there's just pretty basic bent, bent carbon fiber. <laughs> oh, I'll pull these things out anywhere usually. Um, pe people do call me No Feet Pete. Um, I'm not sensitive about it. Day two in the hospital, I think even, my mom said something about, oh, well, you don't have a leg to stand on, you know. <laughs> It's a, it's a challenge, but I definitely, it's a, it, you can overcome it. Anybody can, I think. Um, I kind of got lucky because I was young when it happened. Um, 
so I was able to kind of bounce back, you know, a lot quicker. It seems to have become part of your identity yeah. in, a, in a way, yeah. in like, in the way that you embrace it. Yeah. And have fun with it. Yeah, totally. And you know, you're no feet Pete. <laughs> you wouldn't be the same. Yeah. I don't know, if you, yeah, if, you no, if you went back and could, uh, <laughs> and could change it, do you think you would? I want it. Uh, no, I wouldn't try to undo it. I mean, I think if I lived in a different time and age, maybe I wish I could go back and do it. Um, it was, it was also pretty easy for me to get over what happened. Um, that be, because I didn't have anybody, anybody to blame. It was, I put myself in that position and, and I felt terrible for, I felt really bad for my family and friends and stuff who I put it, put them through that. Um, but I wouldn't, um, it has given me, yeah, my identity is that, and it, it, may, it makes me kind of push harder, and, and I'm, I'm happy about it, I'm proud of it, I guess. I'm, I guess I'm proud of myself. Uh, <laughs> but um, but I, try not to, I try to be humble about it, you know? It's just like, I think, I think anyone who's gone through something like that could push through just like I have, you know? And, um, and there's things I don't do because of it, um, but, uh, but I'm, I'm fine with that. You can't do everything anyway. I can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can't do everything anyway. You know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. I don't know. Cool. These guys just wrecking my tools. It's okay, we got more. This drill worked fine before you guys took it apart, right? <laughs> this was a non-running a... drill. Yeah, see, yep. There's like a crap ton of resistance in there. You guys, uh, let the viewers know what time it is that we're drinking beer. It is uh, about almost 6 p.m. We've had a beer. A We've had a beer. Spot. We're done with work for the day. <laughs> Half past beer. But... <laughs> Maybe, it, I don't know, maybe it is just that brush. So. See, that spring won't go any further down. What's going on over here? Oh, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Getting pretty comfortable there, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hungry. <laughs> cool, well, this was fun. <laughs> You guys fixed it yet? <laughs> no, it's still broken. We can put it back wait, wait, together wait, no, no, no. and see. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, yeah. oh, look at oh, yeah. that! <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. No, oh, let's see what happens. Give it a go. Try it without. Uh oh. Oh, it made a noise. It does like whatever the problem is. I think it's in this thing. Yeah. Have you tried hitting it with a hammer? <laughs> Do you turn it on and off? Did you try just setting it out over I tried plugging it in, but there's no cord on it. <laughs> well, there's your problem. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to keep much water out, Pete. This plank's a little small. <laughs> yeah, are you sure you're ship right? It's not good to make them this short either. <laughs> what about those big gaps? That, that'll be filled with the corking. Yeah, yeah. We go get t-shirts at Goodwill, <laughs> soak them in uh, roofing tar, and just kind of pack them in there. Well, I've, I mean, I've, I've seen that done. <laughs> Ooh.
This sucks. <laughs> Is this an interview or just a film? It's a film. Still working on the broads, the broad planks, um, which are the lower seven planks, the garboard and seven more. Um, and uh, all of those end at the stern post and get captured. Um, and uh, we're switching over to WANA now, um, which we, we had that plan all along. There has to be a point where we go from Angelique to WANA. That's what I was supposed to say, right? Yeah. All along, this has been the plan all along. We didn't know when exactly. Uh, yeah, we didn't know we didn't know exactly how many of those planks we were gonna get be able to get out of the Angelique stock that we we got delivered here. So, um, and if uh, so, we are we're getting low on Angelique. We need to make sure we save enough to take care of our shear strike. So we've decided to switch over to to our Wana stock. So just recently, this project has been supported in a really interesting and meaningful way. Uh, I'm just going to quickly tell that story. Um, until recently, there was a shipwright working in this area called Jake Jacobson, who I didn't know very well, but I spoke to him on the phone. Uh, he seemed to me like a really, really nice guy. Um, and by all accounts, he was a, a great shipwright and a really great leader, a really great teacher, um, a really important part of the shipwright community in this area um, and sadly he passed away last year and I think he's uh, very missed by the community here. A few weeks ago I got a call from a friend of mine Daniel um, who along with another guy Andy who runs uh, Emerald Marine Services in Anacortes uh, together they had a collection of Jake's old tools, all, all of his ship riding tools. And they wanted to keep those tools together and have them sort of continue Jake's legacy uh, by uh, providing some training or some assistance to shipwrights in the making. So I'm gonna let Rosie tell the rest of the story, uh, but I just wanna say a, a huge thanks to, uh, to Daniel and to Andy uh, for making it happen. And of course to Jake for uh, everything that he did in his life. Probably about a month ago, Leo told me that there were two men who had a collection of tools from a shipwright friend of theirs, Jake Jacobson, who'd passed away recently. And they were 
looking to keep it together as a collection and pass it on as kind of a, a wandering loner set of tools to young people who are interested in getting into the trade. Yeah, and so this seemed like a good fit for me because I think Daniel had seen me on the videos and known that I was here in this project as on a kind of an apprentice uh, position. And then they showed up with a very large box of tools that I'm extremely appreciative for. We have some large clamps. There are a lot of drill bits. There's some different planes of sorts. There's a box with a bunch of hand tools like the bevel gauge, dividers, squares. Yeah, drill indexes. Yeah. A few extra hair ties. Punches. Yeah. Everything a budding shipwright needs. Even a box of new sharp pencils. It's nice. It is nice. When I'm done with these, I will get in touch with Andy and I will return everything sharp in beautiful working condition and they will be passed on to another person looking to get into the shipwright trade. The relevance of the Viking laws, I would say, is that Jake believed in the importance of them. Here's some of my favorites from the Viking laws. Grab all opportunities. Use varying methods of attack. Be versatile and agile. Agree on important points. Find good battle comrades. Don't promise what you can't keep. Consult all members of the group for advice. All sound, sound advice. No, I do not feel like a Viking warrior now. Ask me again in, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, I don't. Maybe someday. I think you're a Viking warrior. Right? Wow, thanks, Leah. <laughs> ay, ay. Hopefully this, hopefully this in-depth Pete episode satiates all the Pete fans out there uh, and I can get back to work. Um, <laughs> I did ask for this, I guess. But anyway, I guess it's a going theme of uh, me being upset when the camera's on me. Um, and uh, I want to assure everyone that, that, uh, that I'm, it's not, I'm not unhappy about the viewers or being uh, seen by the world uh, with what I'm doing. Uh, I'm actually really happy that there's so many people uh, supporting what we do. Uh, I'm really happy to be here um, and on this, this project. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a shipwright like myself, um, especially a, a young guy. I, I, I hopefully see more boats getting built in the future, uh, but it is a di kind of a dying art. Um, it's really great to see everyone who supports, it's really inspiring. Um, so. <sighs> Alright, so that is about it for this video. Planking is ongoing, of course, um, and we had a little bit of time off over New Year's, but generally I'm really pleased with the progress we're making. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know Pete a little bit better. Um, it is really great to have him on the team. I've got some interesting stuff to show you guys in the next video. Uh, but until then, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for supporting this project. It is amazing to me uh, that this is possible at all for us to do this. And we're all so grateful and I'm blown away every day. So thank you and uh, happy new year. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>